is pretty creepy, and I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, <laughs> it's wonderful. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Robbie. This is my craft corner, and you guys seem to love my last video where we did pro makeup versus DIY. At least I hope so. I haven't actually posted that one yet. So we're doing a part two. So today. We have a special guest, my friend since I was 15 years old, and now she's a special effects movie makeup artist, Cassandra Byers! <laughs> wow, well, quite the entrance! Completely real, no stunt doubles at all. So let's do the first makeup thing. Cassandra's gonna be making Tori into Cthulhu. What's the first step, Cassandra? Okay, so now we're making Tori into Cthulhu, and let's dive into the packs pre-painting. I like starting with lighter colors as the base, so when you add the detail, you can add darker colors to it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and let the base coat dry for a second. 7.59. I wanted to go ahead and add a little more texture in the pre-painting, so I'm using this really cool wire sponge and just dabbing away with the blue and the green instead of just one color. But of course we're gonna like, you know, add all the details when it's on the face, but it's nice to get a little bit started. Yay! Okay, so this is looking pretty good, so we're gonna go ahead and let it dry and then put it on Tori! 12 seconds later. All right, now that it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and put contacts on Tori so it's a bit easier. We're gonna go ahead and put a wig cap on so we can later apply this beautiful wig once everything's on dandy. First things first, we applied the glue on the back of the prosthetic to stick to her face, so we're gonna go ahead and apply it. I'm pretty happy because this method is a lot easier than the last video because since I've already pre-painted it, now I mostly just have to make sure everything's glued down properly and we can have fun with the textures instead of making sure we cover the whole entire prosthetic with the color we want, and that's very time consuming. We're gonna add the thicker rose, it's the rose cream, just to help blend the edges so we look like this is literally attached to our face. Since sometimes our rose can be a little sticky, I just wanna pull and blend near Tori's eyes. So I'm gonna wait until we cover most of this with alcohol paint and go back in and blend right between her eyes. Under our eyes, it's very delicate, and we don't wanna pull at her skin. Nope. We are gonna go ahead and wait a few moments so this can dry a little bit before we add our paint. One hour later! Now let's get into painting with the airbrush. Taking my alcohol palette, which is activated by 99% alcohol, and this brush that I cut up, you just click it and it'll give you all these tiny dots of detail. It's like super HD. Close your eyes, Tori. Going back in with the palette to create some shadowing now. We're gonna go back in with the flecking to kind of diffuse the shadowing we did. And we're gonna go in with our cream paints now so we can go ahead and paint around the prosthetic. And we're gonna set the cream with some powder. You can just go in with eyeshadow. We're gonna fleck the same flecking we did on the prosthetic on her skin too so it all blends. But first, we have to set all of this. I'm gonna go in with some blue eyeliner. Take this liner and yep. give Tori a little bit of blue water wine just so we use something that's easy to get in there and safe. All right, so now that Tori's done, we are going to add one more step and add some like algae. Things that sit in the ocean, sometimes are covered in algae, and maybe he is too, or she. If you go to Michael's, there's an aisle with a bunch of little like trees and stuff for tiny miniature dollhouses. This is meant to be grass. If you're afraid your hands are gonna get messy, this project probably isn't for you or this career. My hands look like this. So Cthulhu's hands can look like this. <laughs> so we're all done. Now we're gonna put Tori's wig on. To put a wig on, it's good to have a friend help you, but do the two horns and go. I'm just gonna paint her neck with some eyeshadow just because it's quick and the neck isn't our main focus, but the color still needs to be there, so let's go in. Now you're ready for your sea monster date. Okay, I'm ready for the big reveal. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, your face matches my hair. I got you something for your, your transformation. <gasps> it's a raincoat. Oh my god, you screwed in half. Oh, oh. oh hi, I didn't see you there. <laughs> okay, so now I have to try and one-up this with the intern. Let's see how that goes. 
Oh yeah guys, so I need to do a little bit of prep for this one. I actually need to make the weird tentacle things that were on the Cthulhu face. I'm actually gonna use some foam. I just got this from Walmart. It's just like basic foam. So the first thing I think I'm gonna do is mark out the tentacles. The original is all one piece, so maybe I should make it all one piece. <laughs> Oh, this is true art. What do you think, Cassandra? Is this spot on to yours? It looks pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. That's very reassuring, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out now. Okay, well, uh, don't need this anymore. Oh no, I took the whole thing. We have completed Cthulhu's face. Now we have to finish this face with uh, liquid latex. I'm doing the DIY version. This is the this is the latex that Cassandra's using. Too fancy for us. We're using this one. I got this for five dollars on Amazon. So we just pour us some of this latex, and then I'm just gonna drip it on. What would Cassandra do? So yeah, I would pour it on too, and then I would brush it so it's all evenly distributed. Oh no! I spilled my latex! Oh god! It's gotten everywhere. Oh my. Intern! Okay, I'll just have the intern clean that up in a sec. Flip it over. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side. I feel like I should have maybe sculpted this a little bit better. Wow! Yeah, this is gonna be a good Cthulhu face. It's gonna be better than Cassandra's, I can already tell. Now we're gonna dry it, and then we apply it to the intern's face. So now that our DIY foam prosthetic is uh, nice and dry, uh, we're gonna apply this to his face. Oh, but first we need to... What are you doing? You don't need those. Trust me. You look better without them. Yeah, see this face? Yeah, the comments down below. Tell me if you guys think the intern looks better without uh, glasses. I think he does. You're so sweet. We're gonna join the palm tree gang. Palm tree pog. And now it's time to put on the prosthetic. Just kidding, we don't need this. Oh. Just remove all your piercings, actually. Now that we got all of his piercings out, my face feels naked. So I have to figure out how to apply this to your face. I could use a string to attach it. Poke a little hole. Robbie, it smells so bad. Just don't breathe. No, I do that! We now have applied the tentacles. Now we have to kind of blend it in because there's this big old gap here now. And using some of the skin wax that I bought for $5 on Amazon, I'm going to try and blend it into his face. Just really make it stick underneath the cracks. up your uh, Squidward themed shirt. So I'm gonna add this little apron. Now I have to try and paint this so that it looks realistic. I'm using this cheap makeup palette that I got off of Amazon for like $10. And we're just gonna go straight into it. paintbrush because I feel like it's just kind of working way better. I think that actually looks pretty good if you ask me. I completely forgot about this but I was gonna add eyes. You don't really like contacts around here. So I got this gumball from like a gumball machine. It's like a container. And I was thinking I just take a colored part, went ahead and drilled a hole. Oh god. And then I drew uh, the eye shape using Sharpie. But you know I already did that with um, green ones. Uh, I think they fit definitely a lot better. Okay now I have to carefully put these on his eyes. Now I gotta clean off the eyes because they're a little, uh, a little dirty. Okay, so Cassandra used moss. I don't have any moss, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use some of this broccoli instead. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think we are all done. Let's show Cassandra the big reveal. Okay, guys, come in. What do you guys think? Um, <laughs> it's wonderful. Mine's definitely falling apart pretty quick, but you know what? Uh, I only spent $5 on memory foam, $5 on the hand wax, a dollar on my two gumballs, and the dollar on my broccoli, so. Oh, and also all the paint spot. Dang it! That's another 15! So this is a $30 so we have the foam latex prosthetic that was probably about like 80 bucks and we have our paint that we did with the alcohol base and those together the palette is like $80. We have our cream makeup which is probably about 50 This was from Michael so that wasn't that expensive. Probably about $5. Contacts that were like 20 <laughs> This wig uh, I would say maybe like 20 bucks. So I don't know probably like $200, $300. Wow! 30 versus 300. <laughs> 
can't tell the difference at all. <laughs> I would go for this one personally. But well, you did a great job too, I guess. What would you rate this one? 10 out of 10. Really? You would give this a 10 out of 10? Yes, you put your heart and soul into it. I would give yours a 10 out of 10. Okay, let's do the next one. I'm going to prop my prosthetic up just with a little bit of tape because the base is just a little too low for me to see. And with this one, now we're gonna make Robbie into an old man. And we're going in with our Pax paint, painting into them wrinkles. 12 seconds later. All right, now that we're finished, we're gonna let old man Jenkins lay out to dry before we're gonna put it on Robbie. He's gonna look like such a beautiful old man. Can't wait. Whee! All right, y'all, first things first, we put glue on this and we're gonna go ahead and slap it on. Slap. All right, we're just gluing down the edges and we'll worry about the lips last. All right, and since at the beginning we prepared and painted this, we're gonna go ahead and add detail with our favorite alcohol palette and our favorite licking brush. We're adding some warmth back into the old man's face so he looks a little more alive, because you know right now he looks kinda dead. While I wait for some glue to dry, we're gonna go ahead and put a little glue where his eyebrows would be and add some little old man eyebrows with some crepe wool. So here's our crepe wool. It's wool you can get at Amazon or any makeup store, and it comes in a braid, and then when you're gonna use it, you just wanna take some scissors, cut it down the middle, and take your freshly cut part and put it against the skin or your prosthetic. And so our dear friend Robbie can see. Let's go ahead and cut them. Mustache lips. Be very careful not to cut your friend's lips. Oh my gosh, that's one hell of a mustache. <laughs> Let's bump you up, Grandpa. Spray you real quick too to help shape your mustache. Okay. I feel so old! Dude, I can't move my mouth at all. <laughs> Is my mouth moving? A little bit. What up? Is your age, Cassandra? <laughs> this is pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie. I should try and go to Denny's and get the senior discount. Big brain. This is pretty impressive. I like how I still have some eyeliner on from yesterday. So I look like an emo old man. Well, I definitely don't think I'm gonna do this good on my makeup. I'm gonna try my darn best though. So I'm gonna be doing her makeup as an old man. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult and I'm gonna be talking kind of mumbled, so I apologize. So this is the way that Five Minute Crafts taught me to make old person makeup. Basically, you just get a bunch of glue. Boop, 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 boop. And then you kind of pull the skin as you apply it. And I'm gonna take a blow dryer and just try and dry it. One eternity later. And then in theory, you can kind of barely see it, but it actually did make really small wrinkles. Now I just gotta do that all over her face. Just stretch her face, and then I'll apply the glue. Okay, time to dry again. 20 minutes later. And now I'm doing this method that I like to call trying to zoom in on her face. Oh wow, when I like stretch it actually, and then it goes back. Try stretching your face. Whoa! It's looking pretty good so far. Oh my goodness. I mean the white still needs to dry. I'm gonna start doing your forehead now. I need to do it thinner. Now I'm gonna take some translucent powder and put it right on the glue. I'm hoping that this actually helps it dry faster. Now back to the hair dryer. Six hours later. Okay, so I'm actually pretty disappointed with how this came out. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's good for a second. You see some wrinkles and then it goes away. I feel like I completely oh. failed this one. I'm gonna try putting on a little bit of foundation. Hopefully this will accentuate it. You know what I could do? I could like partly peel it off and then just glue it back on. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try it a little bit. So we're gonna just get in there. This looks so weird. And then we're just gonna go and put some glue on the stick and shove it right back in there. You know what? It's fine. I'm just gonna get to blending it with my beauty blender that I found in the trash. This was free. Then we got a little bit of finishing powder. Then I'm gonna spray a little bit of setting spray. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use my palette to give her some old lady makeup. Again, this is my super cheap palette that I got off of Amazon. I think it was like $10. And then we're gonna give you a little bit of lipstick. As you guys can tell, I'm a professional at doing makeup, okay? You can't forget your old lady eyeliner mascara, right? It's what you have to do. And then we're gonna draw on your eyebrows because you were in your 20s and you were like, hey, I'm gonna shave my eyebrows. Give me some blush too. Oh, you want some blush? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get you some blush. Oh God, oh no, oh God. I'm gonna have to blend that in. What else do old ladies wear? A beauty mark. Oh, I need to give her a little mole. One mole right there. And your transformation is almost complete. Now the final step, adding a wig. Boom! Now you're 
an old lady. What do you think? Think I did a good job? Yeah. I love it. It's great. Okay, so grand total for mine. I think I spent $15 on the makeup, but I also had that before. Maybe a dollar on the glue. Do I buy the hair dryer? You could technically do this without the hair dryer. It just takes longer. Oh, and also this wig that I stole from my cosplayer girlfriend. That was free. So, yeah, it was less than $20 to make. Okay, what about you, Cassandra? Uh, how much was this whole setup right here? All right, so we have crepe wool as your mustache and eyebrows, and that was about five bucks. We have this prosthetic. That was probably about $80. Both of the alcohol paint palettes I used, probably about $200 combined. And then we have an eyeshadow palette that was about 60 bucks. So again, I think we're looking at about $300. Really? But so you know what? What? You're priceless. Oh, $20 versus $300. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. Me neither. <laughs> Anyway, on to the next one. All right, so first we are going to prep this prosthetic by painting the packs before we put it on the face because that is a lot more efficient, don't you think? So again, if you forgot, our packs paint is um, basically acrylic paint and Prosade, and Prosade is medical adhesive. And we're just painting, just getting that all covered so we seal all of this foam latex so we can paint on top of it without any paint getting sucked inside and wasting product. I would say this is my favorite part of um, doing special effects makeup. It's always the painting that's fun. And when you work with PAX paint, it's just kind of good to wear gloves because since it's a medical adhesive and acrylic paint, it'll really stick to you and it's kind of hard to get off, so. All right, now we're done. We're gonna um, go ahead and let this dry so we can put it on Robbie's face. Hey, Cassandra, what are you making me into now? I'm alien. How the heck are you gonna do that? How the heck am I gonna do that? I don't know, good luck. Okay, so what's the first step? All right, first, we're going to put your hair back into a wig cap, two fingers up. Put your fingers up. Because the prosthetic itself is a little bit bigger, so it, when we glue it down, it needs a bald head to be glued down to. And I'm losing my ears. Nah, I just cut the hole in of you. When you do this, you always want to cut just a little smaller than the ear itself. Stop! Ah, no kidding. So you can um, just stick it behind while you're gluing. Uh, so after we finish with our ear holes, we're gonna go ahead and put Prosade on the edge parts. Get a blow dryer just to warm it up so it's all nice and tacky and then pull it down and anchor it to our face. All right, so. Here's the prosthetic. We put the ball cap down so it has something to glue to up at the top. And it's a little bit bigger than our other ones where they just met right here at the forehead, but our forehead isn't right here for this one. It's way back here. So we're gonna put this on, you know, protect, you know, his hair from glue and all that. And so we're just gonna glue along these lines and easy. So next we're gonna blend our edges with our thicker prosade, the prosade cream, and just make this all look like it's a part of him. All right, so now with our portable airbrush, we're going to paint these stripes to give him some more details instead of just being a flat alien. And then we're just going to hand paint now with our alcohol paint. Now I'm adding some pink alongside the blue. We're just adding some more depth and colors. Then we're gonna take our detail brush and start um, flecking on colors onto the skin. So we're doing all this detail painting in the stripes, but what's gonna make this pull into one is gonna be when we do the white. Look, I'm Lord Voldemort. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go prepare the eyeballs and make them so we can stick them in Robbie's face. All right, so just sit here for a little bit, okay? Uh, just like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so our alien prosthetic came with some eyeballs that we kind of have to cut out ourselves. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that on camera. There we go. And here they are. All right, now we're gonna paint them to give them some color. So we're just gonna take acrylic paint. Um, this is just from Michaels. You can take any acrylic paint and we're just gonna put them on the inside because when you paint the inside, it tends to look more smoother than if we paint it on the outside. Just so we can get the rest of these little spots, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the second layer so it's nice and opaque. Now that these are fully painted, we're gonna go ahead and slap these on to Robbie's head. All right, Robbie, here they are. Wow. Am I gonna be able to see in these? Definitely not. Oh, <laughs> okay, I just spit on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, insert the eyes into my eye holes. Okay. Oh no, yep, I definitely can't see at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna add some ears. This is the last touch and we're done. Wow, it looks, Actually, I can't really see how it looks. Oh no, I gotta sneeze. Oh god, oh god. Is it gonna fly off? No. <laughs> it's really staying on, isn't it? Wow! Good 
job. I honestly don't know how I'm gonna one up this, especially going in blind. Literally, I'm going in blind. I'm gonna be blind when I do this. Where's the Where's the camera? Well, I guess now it's time for me to try and recreate this look on Tori. Okay, Tori Dabransky, are you ready for me to turn you into an alien? I, I think so. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I took the eyes out so I could actually see while I'm doing this. I still have very limited. I could probably see about one third as well as I normally can. It's okay. I'll I could still do your makeup like a pro. So, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, put your hair back and then put it into a bald cap. This, uh, bald cap is not as nice as the one that Cassandra used on me. Um, hers was, like, $20 or something. This one's from, like, the Halloween store, and I think it was, like, three bucks or something. It was really cheap. Okay, looks pretty good. Uh, I might just hide your ears. That's um, fine. I know. don't need ears. We don't even need ears. And then, like always, I'm gonna use some eyelash glue. This has a little bit of red in it because I mixed it with some fake blood a while ago. Uh, this is some really cheap eyelash glue. Wait, no, this isn't. I also stole this from my girlfriend. But you can use really cheap eyelash glue. At least that's what I do. To just kind of adhere the ball cap onto her face. And then I actually went out and got even more gumball containers. Uh, these were like $10 for all of them. It came with 150 pieces. Uh, but we're only using two. These would be about a dollar if you bought them in a gumball machine for two of them. And then we're just going to go ahead <laughs> and somehow adhesive these to your eyes like that. Oh no, I can see out of a <laughs> pinhole. <laughs> then I'm gonna get some of this $5 scar wax. Uh, you can get this at a Halloween store. The intern loved this, uh, and I know that you're gonna love this as well. Just really blend this into the rest of your face. <laughs> I look good. Do I look beautiful? That look really good. Oh, stop it. Now we're gonna paint Tori green using this green, uh, it's just a cream makeup. You can get this for like a dollar at Walmart during Halloween time. <laughs> one of us, one of us. Really got all the fun details. We're done. Wow, you look fantastic. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. Well, let's show Cassandra and see what she thinks. Cassandra, so what do you think about my makeup? Did I do a good job? She looks like a very wet chameleon. What I said. <laughs> okay, so basically I used the same method that I used on the intern where I just got the little gumball containers and I used scar wax to adhere them to her face. Obviously it's not as practical as this because I can just take my eyeball out and I can actually see. We're talking like $5 for the bald cap, a dollar for the makeup, and a dollar for the gumball containers. So under $10. All right, so this prosthetic, um, all together, I think with the sculpt and then also these eyeballs, and the bald cap, probably about like $100. And then we used our alcohol paint, which is another $100. And a little bit more cream paint, which was probably about 50 bucks. So this one was probably about, right around our range, the other ones have been $300. Whoa! So this this is three hundred dollars versus ten dollars. Wow! There's really a diminishing returns when it comes to aliens. You know, this is like thirty times the price, and you know, <laughs> honestly, Cassandra, yours look way better than mine. Uh, I don't know how you do it. This is fantastic. They look the same. <laughs> wow! This is awesome. Woo! Okay, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. It looks something like this, and you can find it right down there. If you guys like this video, and you guys want to watch us try even more crazy Halloween costumes, we actually made another video. You can click that card right here. If you guys want to follow Cassandra on Instagram, I actually have a link to it down in the description down below. If you guys want to subscribe to me, you can click right here. If you guys want to subscribe to Tori Nebraska, you can click right here. And if none of that stuff sounds fun, you can always click the mystery cards. Okay, guys, I love you so much. I'll see you guys again real soon. Peace, love, and Wi-Fi. I'm running. Okay, uh, bye! <laughs>